Um, what hey, you, Derek, what's up? Hey, this what's is the up? Rhett Seaver podcast. Okay, yeah. Hey, Rhett. So what's funny, though, is we're, we're actually testing out right now what we were just talking about. Yeah. Because we're putting ourselves we almost have a hypothesis about right now we're being observed yes we're being right. observed so um that's exactly what we were talking about earlier i was trying to think about um why when i see a really um poorly acted out commercial yeah uh why do i cringe and immediately want to turn it off why does it why does it uh repugnant me um and you were saying it's because the motivation. Yeah. You're saying the motivation is financial, and right. that's what I see. Now, I don't, but when I'm seeing the commercial, I don't think in my inner dialogue, oh, hey, the motivation here is obviously financial. Uh, this is why I'm, I, I distaste it. It's, 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 it's a feeling, it's a guttural feeling. Yeah. It's not, it's, but it's, so I think, but my theory is it's what they're projecting, um, and, and, it, and it's their, perhaps their fear of failure of acting and saying the lines right and I so that is projected onto me and and no one wants to hold that feeling now you were what did you were saying about well um right because if it's if it's a commercial um you know the the director isn't gonna care that the person's acting well because the motivation is that they're just trying to sell the product now the irony is that um if they acted more well they would probably maybe sell more product but they're not thinking about it in artistic terms because. But you said that they're using an artistic medium. They're, yeah, they're using, they're using the same tools as art. So, so I think that's where your confusion of where your uncomfortableness comes in, because you're un, you're uncomfortable because you're usually used to seeing a movie that's well acted. Yeah. And so, um, which is using the same tools right, as their reciting, art. Because I was about to say, cameras themselves aren't necessarily immediately for artistic purpose i mean not right. every not every picture is documentation art, documentation it's whatever but, motivation but people want recitation of lines in front of a camera um and oh that's even more interesting so right they're even being more artistic because they they're acting right but it's still for the uh, the commercial motivation um if if they were actually trying to create art which is a message of love and understanding then it would be less uncomfortable because that's why great okay. movies make you feel good but i have a point here yeah which is i think it, i think it's interesting if you go in the opposite direction where uh, you make it say a commercial and it's obviously trying to go in an artistic direction there are artistic commercials there are right. artistic commercials but they still those still make me revolt a little bit artistic commercial oh i bet it's this I, i'm just guessing T tell me if i'm wrong okay because now they're trying to um do something that usually has a commercial interest and they're trying to confuse it with art yeah and so that they're mixing right. those two things and it makes us feel gross because it's like wait no art is supposed to be about love not about making money yeah. not being about a prostitute they're, they're abusing something right so it's either it's verse it's marriage versus prostitution right yeah art is marriage prostitution is commercialism yeah so it's either basically confusing the the destinations of love or money right okay okay but i think their their main goal is memorableness Okay, because I, I, I've, right, I've seen that's a lot of art. Make people buy something. Yeah, I've seen a lot of art in my life. That is art for art's sake, right? Right. And for love, and and there isn't. They're not trying to sell you something behind it. Right. But that art, uh, I don't remember as much as I remember a commercial that makes me seethe. Right, because their motivation was to print something in your mind so that you then go buy it when you yeah. are at the store and it's that i i realize it's also repetition that commercials on more than yeah and you can't replicate certain art for love's sake it, it's true it's supposed to exist in the time it is right and it's then, true and 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 uh and that should suffice but then some artists have done both successfully where they have spread love through art and they could only do that in a commercial sense because give me an if, example um I, I mean, let's say Bob Dylan, right? Okay. To me, that is pure art, but okay. he also sold it. Yeah. So he is spreading the communication of love and art through understanding, 
throughout society, but he could only accomplish that through a record label to sell the records. Yeah. He couldn't do that just sitting out on the street corner. He, yeah. He'd only hit the people who walked past him. Right, if you wanna, and that, the marriage of commercialism and art it's is, a trick. It's probably it's, it's rare. It's a conversation that it's Stanley Kubrick, it's Martin Scorsese, it's Steven Spielberg. I mean, that's Spielberg. a podcast in it's and the, itself. It's the Beatles. It's a podcast in and itself. It's the relationship Bob between art and commercialism. Right. And but commercialism isn't the, the big bad boogeyman either. I mean, no, it's, not, it's true because through commercialism, then you get to spread it more. Yeah. Right. And so it's good. So that's why the people who are the, the people I just listed, the phenomenons of of our pop culture, they did that successfully. They communicated love and art yeah. through the commercialism and, and, and what's um, un, yeah, what's unfortunate, machine. Yeah, and what's unfortunate is that quality doesn't necess- necessitate popularity. Just because something is, in, in, it, 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 let's say, um, yeah, it has a lot of tentativeness to, and, it has, and it's expressing love in a pure, beautiful way doesn't necessitate that it's going to spread very far you almost need right. the, you almost need the marriage of commercialism like um yeah um, to, to 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 spread that further because otherwise yeah. uh i mean yes it could be enjoyed by a few people but isn't the, the point to get to as many minds as possible because then they can retool that and and put forward their uh more of it to me that's that called status right the cult status where something becomes a, a cult following. film or a cult following, right? Yeah. That's because it resonated with so many people, but the people, the small group of people it did resonate with, they're devoted, right? They're small but devoted yeah. because the message resonated with them personally, but it wasn't so universal that it okay. resonated quick, beyond that. Quick, name something that you, you, you consider yourself a fan of that is more of an occult oh uh, like um, John Waters of, uh, the, the the film director John Waters okay, yeah his films are cult I'm from Baltimore right so yeah that's a cult following yeah you're, because you're, you're he's right not hugely no he's um, not uh, you know a lot of dumb people where I'm from in Minnesota they're not gonna know John Waters yeah but a lot of cool people in New York City do uh, right he, you I know, mean and I think cool you know cool in that way and I know exactly what you mean when you're saying that cool and that there people aren't afraid to explore new things and new means like you wouldn't be surprised when if you talk to John Waters and he knows this music but he also knows this other music that's a thousand um, relationships away you wouldn't be yeah. surprised because so that's or almost, you would be surprised yeah it would meaning that that's yeah. that's respectful and and you know that he goes his own way and beats goes by the beat of his own drum right yeah. well you think that that's why he gets the respect oh that's so interesting because um what was it yes um i think it was the tennis a, a tennessee williams book okay john waters does the four that's so funny that you said that and that that was my example because i just saw at film forum the um truman and tennessee williams Truman Capote and you Tennessee know what? Williams. I saw you that day. Oh, that's hilarious! I saw you that day, and I said, "What and are I, you doing?" Yeah, you and I was I was going to that yep, movie, yep. and so I, when I they're fil- they're selling the book at Film Forum, and um, it's a ten- a Tennessee Williams book, like a biography, I think, or no, or it's like his plays or something, and the foreword is by John Waters, and it and it, it surprised me because I'm like, whoa, I wouldn't think John Waters would do that. Uh, now it makes sense because they're both gay, right? Yeah. It makes sense in that way. But I never would have thought John Waters was into Tennessee yeah. Williams because Tennessee Williams is more of like this refined theatrical play type. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, I'm aware of both of right. them. Right. Yeah. And so I, I wouldn't think... I mean, I mean, I'm not surprised that John Waters is into it, but I think that I'm surprised Waters, he did the foreword, right? That, like, I think that John Waters, the, the reason... His many we, facets. Well, we also give him the respect that uh, he gets uh, doing what he does where he does basically gutter... Uh, gutter for you know, yeah, gutter, uh, takes, like pink flamingos. I mean, come he on. He takes the garbage plot. and makes it art, right? Because because he knows that he is making gar. He knows it. He's a, it's self aware. He he realizes he's making garbage because he also at the same time appreciates the other. Yeah. Uh, more, lo- I guess, lofty, um, more sentimental. Yeah. Uh, and- less vulgar arts. He's aware of them, knows about them, is versed in them. Right. But he said, well, I haven't seen a lot of this. Yeah, you know, because 
he right he knows those refined things he is from an upper mi- yeah. upper class yeah. Family, yeah. so he does. It, but that's why he's able to then take the trash yeah. and make it art. I mean, because he knows what art is. Ben Franklin has how many? He he made so many poems about farts. He what? Was, yes, I didn't know that. Ben Franklin was really obsessed with farts. Oh, that's hilarious! So I didn't know that. He wrote uh, poems about farts. He, I mean, he wow. wrote many and many letters that he would. Um, they they documented all the letters that he wrote back and forth between that's many hilarious. different people. That's hilarious. And a lot, uh, there was a lot of fart material. Wow. I'm, I'm not really... You know, uh, I have to say this. The first joke ever, it was on a Sumerian tablet. Oh, that's hilarious. And it was about a woman farting while she's sitting in uh, a guy's lap. Wow. That's I, I, I don't know exactly what the punchline is or anything. Right. But I know that that's the, the premise. The premise of the joke. It's the first joke that we have right. of re- recorded history is a fart joke. Wow. Just have to say that. Now, also, John Waters, I've seen Pink Flamingos... And I've seen um, Crybaby. Yeah. But I haven't seen... Like Hairspray. You know what I haven't cereal seen? Cereal Mom. See, the thing is, is I'm not, hu- I'm not a huge um, musical fan. I love Grease. Because okay. I grew up with Grease. But other okay. than that, I'm not a huge musical fan. Um, I, I'd rather see the plot um, play out through action than even dialogue, let alone singing in your face about it. No, yeah. I oh, can't do that. One, one thing I should get on record is that Grease does have a bad message to it it's basically saying that oh sandy in order to fit in you have to change you know what's that's funny? bad message <laughs> what's funny is i didn't you know i like that since i was so little that i didn't know that any different you know and i what's funny is i was in a daycare back then and i brought it to daycare to watch you know talking about first grade here and i bring it to watch for everybody to watch right before nap time and they finally agreed to put it on and the first scene is them at a drive-in, and they're all making out with each other, like in different. Yeah. Part, and they're like, and the daycare teacher's like, "Oh, okay, 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 off time." Oh. Because this was also in in the deep south. So. Oh, that's funny. Well, that's funny you say that because there, if you look closely in the um, scene in Greece at the beginning, where they're having a rally, yeah. and then and then the kids at the beach or whatever, and then there's that awkward moment with with her, Sandy and Danny bumping into each other yeah. again. Well, right before that, there's a, a pep rally where there's like this black thing hanging from a noose, and it's like, what? whoa! In the background? No, it's in the background and it's burning, yeah. and it's a black, it's like a black I stuff have to thing. See that? I no, mean, I, I know kinda, it's I very can... in the in the it's very detailed now, in the background. Did you hear about that um, in the Wizard of Oz? Supposedly, if you look in one of the scenes, yeah, there's a there's a hanging. Um, do you know what's so funny about that? Uh, I know uh, what that is not, actually. It's not a mi- It what? looks like that, but do you know what it actually is? What? It's uh, the neck of a stork right. going up and down. It's yeah. not a, I had heard that a de- little person being yeah, hung. I had heard that demystified. Yeah. Do you know why um, people found that out? Through the remastering of the movie, oh. when the movie was old and and um, um all a little more grainy, it more faded. Yeah, it looked you couldn't tell what it was, but mm-hmm. then when they remastered it, you can totally tell it's the neck of a bird. Right, isn't that hilarious? Yeah, that, yeah, that, that is that is very strange though. That I, it's almost like the mythology the urban that legend. I yeah. almost rather that not not because I wanted well one people of them love to urban hang legends. It. Yeah, they they truly do, especially with a popular thing that everybody's seen yeah now there we go we're talking about commercialism um and art now yeah. the wizard of oz everybody can relate to it everybody's everybody, seen it everybody's seen it yeah um now what if like let's say i know this is i don't really usually play hypotheticals but yeah. let's say wizard of oz we just let's say you and i somehow stumbled across the film footage of that uh-huh in some uh somebody's library let's say it was never published when right. it was supposed to be published oh, okay right and you and i found it right now when we went to go show this to someone like a like say film critic okay uh would it would they say this immediately needs to be seen by everyone like it is now right. would they immediately say that i mean i think for kids they would say, oh, this looks like a fun they said, kids it, movie. They, they would probably say it looks okay, right? I mean, yeah. isn't that strange? Like, if you think... Right, because since it was... Since Hollywood had such power, they were they were able to just say, oh, no, this is important. Everybody should see this. Right, right. Right? It's like that having it shoved down our throat well, you, sense. You know that it... it That's um, what you mean, right? You, yes, yeah. yes. But you know that it's all originally metaphorical like all of the dude it's actually i think a pretty amazing metaphor of like 
when I get high and I realize the meaning of the universe, yeah. I, I go to that metaphor of, oh, shoot, I'm not supposed to know what the, ba- the man behind the curtain is doing, oh, right? He's no. behind the curtain for a reason. I mean, that's, We're that's not supposed whole... to know what the universe is about. Okay, that's, that's the whole point of our existence. That's a very good THC, uh, Layden, but there's an actual, like the person who wrote the book that the movie is based off of. Right, they, L. They Bomb, wrote it, Frank L. Bomb. Wrote, yes, he wrote it spe- about specific symbolism of the oh, economy of, of the day. Oh, interesting. It was actually specific um, symbolism. So and the her, her economy her slippers was the were curtain. Not, her slippers were not originally ruby. Okay. They were, I believe, silver, and it had to do with going on the silver standard. Right. So it all it, it was all it all had to do with the economy. That's yeah, it interesting. It all had to do with the so economy the, of the eighteen. I forget oh, what eighteen. I bet the man behind the curtain is like the invisible hand of the economy. Yes. Probably. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. Most likely. That's interesting. And the man is probably. You know, some kind of metal. The or machine. Something. Yeah, I mean, uh, the I, robot. Like uh, the 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 idea that it is a metaphor for the economy is enough for me that I didn't memorize exactly what each thing symbolizes. Right. I got too much information. Right. Like the, the scarecrow is the the farming. The the lion is animals. Yes. Well, um, no. I Dorothy's. mean, the scarecrow is obviously the farming. Uh, the farmers. Now the lion. Yeah. I, I'm not exactly. Sure. Well, you know, animals. You, actually, you know what? No. Oh. Who I'm pretty sure that is. Uh, oh, that the symbolizes um, a president, um, Teddy Roosevelt. Right, and also he, you know, with the whole courage thing and the fear. Yeah. Something to do. Maybe right. politicians. Yeah. In, in general, we, I have to look that up, but I know also know that Alice in Wonderland is 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 also metaphorical as well. Yeah. I'm so, sure. anyways, going back to uh, oh, for probably tripping. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but I wanted to, I wanted to tie that into yeah. tie that into. Um, commercialism and filming and then yeah. you know, how because I mean, you were talking about the Heisenberg principle yeah just if once you observe something you change it inherently and so, but then you say once you're being observed yeah then also then it's that, changed. Then that yeah. changes too now the Heisenberg principle like the say, camera uh, or correct, recording device right, yeah. <laughs> yeah correct me if I'm mistaken if I'm uh, if I'm mistaken on this but yeah. the Heisenberg principle comes from when they were to Heisberg and someone else, I forget. Oh, were I forgot where it originates. Well, yeah, well, they were tell observing me. light. Okay. And when Heisberg uh, um, observed it, it was it was a um, it was a particle, and then um, when uh, what, uh, someone else observed it, it was a wave. Like the very oh, next second. quantum physics, yes. right, yes. Yes. They realized that, yeah, somebody told me this, um, where they realized when they were observing the it, it changed it's it. Electrons, yeah. Yeah, w- uh, when they observed it, it did this thing. When they didn't observe it, it did the other thing. Yeah. Which I don't know how they observed it by not observing it, but now, anyway. And, uh, yeah, exactly, like but, the, um, the, the cats, the Schrodinger's cats. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's who's to say that all of that isn't just uh, frou-frou nonsense? Well, it's, it's like, well, I mean... I don't know. You can think of it this way. That whole saying with, oh, if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there, does it make a noise? Well, who knows? But the point is, is like my guess is that, yeah, it makes a noise because there's an insect around. I don't know. I'm just kidding. But it's funny that you should say that because I've been thinking of one thing I wanted to say before we left that other topic was Nikola Tesla. Yeah. He wrote about the electron and about all that wave and probably he said yeah. that uh, man has been misguided uh, about the electron in, in period. Oh, probably. He said it himself. Probably. So it's almost like it's very esoteric knowledge. Yeah. Um, and I think like there's a very the much The mainstream so, scientists have taken it wrong. Yeah, there's much so, very much so purpose. There's a lot of things the mainstream scientists have taken wrong. And I think that their motivation... Fossils. <laughs> yes, their, their motivation isn't necessarily... Uh, to have the purest knowledge, it's other motivations that they're confirmation not... biasing their interest. Yeah, that's true. That's that's what humans do because we're just egos trying to survive, mm-hmm. and it's understandable. And we're at the beginning of our like species time, and we're just dumb still, right? Like we're still evolving. So, um, but anyway, what I was going to say about the tree in the forest thing is the fact that we even have that concept and people use it as an example and we're thinking about it the fact that we're even thinking about oh yeah does the tree in the forest make a noise if nobody's observing it um well the fact that we're even asking that question is significant right Mm -hmm. who knows what the answer is the fact that we know to ask the question is mind-blowing like i always think about how fantasies we have created these fantasies of dragons and unicorns and Whatever is made up in fantasies, right? Is that what the you fa- see when you close your eyes? 
Well, well, the fact that it exists in our head is significant, uh-huh. right? Yeah. That it doesn't exist in reality, but the fact that we've created fantasies and they're in our head, I think, is proof that the universe works in its fractals, right? Yeah. That everything's a fractal of, um, you know, whatever created us, and then what we create is those fantasies now, that aren't real. It's weird because, all right, what I pull from that too is dragons. Yeah. Do you know that every world religion of ancient times, they all have one thing in common, and that is a dragon of some kind. Oh, that's None funny. None of them have any... Some of them believe... So it's probably one of the oldest fantasies, the, it's probably. It's literally every single... Every single nas- uh, root religion um, belief... I don't want to say religion necessarily. Yeah. Has... A, a dragon in their story. Not even necessarily all of them are monotheistic. Not all of them even have a heaven or hell. But all of them have right, a dragon. Even well, even the Judo Christian. Um, it's uh, probably because you know the you early the early humans had a fear of the of the lizard or, or something yeah, or the reptile. I, I I don't think that that even suffices though because Why? even Eskimo. Yeah, but it's even it's Eskimo not created in a where, vacuum though. I'm saying even Eskimo culture where they wouldn't have had snakes to deal with had their own version of a dragon. They wouldn't have a lizard. They wouldn't have had a lizard uh, creature whatsoever um, that far north. Yet they had their own dragon mythology. Who's to say we we that dragons in themselves uh, didn't exist at one point, okay? Now that's we we could say that easily and that's not even that interesting because Well it's really a question of did they breathe fire? I, I'm sure something oh, oh, like oh, it existed, oh, oh, oh. right? Right, okay. But did they fly and, and breathe fire? I mean, right. I'm, all of them, I'm, almost all of them in mythology flew. Because there is the Komodo dragon, right? Almost all of them flew. And also there's this, where unicorns, dra- dragons, right? They're not, they're not created in a vacuum. They're created from something that takes place in reality. A horse, a lizard, right? Okay. And we're just putting these other... They're, we're giving them superpowers, basically. Yeah. We're basically yeah. giving animals superpowers. You know, I, 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 there are many subjects that I could go on from here that I, I can tell that you might not know about. Yeah. Which are, are really uh, so far out. Um, there's so many different directions that yeah, I could go. Yeah, I know. Because I feel like, um, so like, like, like dragons, uh, a lot, some people, and I'm not saying me, and this is my main, my main saying, I want to tell you, my main saying is that you can, there's, uh, it's, it's the, uh, it's the sign of a, of an educated mind to be yeah. able to entertain I- ideas without subscribing to them. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So there, but there are people I've heard before, which I think is interesting where they think that certain, we, maybe there were extraterrestrials who had more of a lizard, uh, genealogy and they okay. were perhaps our, our, uh, uh, overlords at one point, or and that's oh, what, yeah, see what I mean, true. something like that, or that they were underground, and but they were they had certain forms to be able to fly, and they li- there you was know a what movie I mean? like this. Oh, what yeah. movie? Go! I really want to know now. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know. I can look it up. I know Tom Green was in it, but it's so <laughs> funny because they even took people like Sarah Palin. Uh-huh. And um, Steve Jobs, and they made them lizard people lizard who people. who live in yeah. the center of the world, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're like the, the evil people who are controlling the people yeah. on the earth. And um, it's so you know, I, 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 freaking I, hilarious. I actually don't think that uh, the the idea of oh. ancient uh, Tom Green played the leader of the cult of the Steve Jobs people. <laughs> uh, I don't but anyway, go that, on. I don't think it's that. Far. Iron Sky. The Iron Sky, have you heard of it? No, I've never heard yeah, of it. Yeah, Iron Sky um, film series. Like a, I think there's like, like one or two or three of them. The Iron yeah. Sky. Is that almost like the Sharknado where it's just like... They're taking all those conspiracy theories of lizard people uh, and, and the, like the, the, the politicians. The yeah, ho- yeah. Uh, um, you know, like um, like basically the idea of like the the Illuminati, the, yeah, yeah. the, the all the successful people are yeah. secretly like, right, the lizard people controlling us. Right, right, yeah. right. It's so funny. And this movie makes fun of that all, but is also a serious, like, action-adventure space movie, you know? I know that... I used to think that all of those origins were from... um, Because I used to be a strict uh, material 
reduction, uh, you know, Darwin, all that stuff, like strictly, right? Yeah. So I used to think that, that that was created because man's first original enemy was the snake, was the worst enemy, and that's why all this, it is. Yeah, like, yeah. That, it's so reductionist that it's almost fucking boring. It almost well, yeah, is. because that was just a time in the human species when that's all we had to worry about. We we couldn't, we didn't have time to worry about anything else or think about anything else because we were running from the lions and snakes. Yeah. So that's why it's all about that. But now, since we're not running from the lions and snakes, we get to th- sit on a park bench and discuss something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's what it is. Now, um, but the thing is, is I'd almost, I'd, I'd argue that I, I would rather go live back in that, in that age and at least not know what I'm missing here. Okay. Um, because it's interesting. He, and here's the reason why is because I think that. Um, that's why there's period dramas. <laughs> yeah. That, oh. Right. That, okay. I mean, think about it. Yeah, right. So I can. So I can. Why would we make a movie about the boring past? Well, because it's interesting. It tells us where we are now. I know. When I when I saw a, a trailer for the movie Ten Thousand BC, I was quite excited. But then I, I found out that it was apparently a very terrible, terrible, terrible film. <laughs> terribly right. made. Terribly. Made. Right. It's now, a Hollywood piece of crap. If yeah. you had a time machine, and I often say this, I had a time machine. I would either do one of uh, two things. I would go. Film Jesus Christ. I would go. Uh, <laughs> I would go 500 million years in the past, okay. or 500 million years in the future. Okay, so just just to see all what or the nothing. Fuck is like, yeah, right. All or nothing. Throw the dice on the table. Basically, Big Bang to the sun as black hole. Yeah. Right. Again, I just told you what's gonna is, happen. Oh yeah, I know. About to <laughs> I'm say. just kidding. Exactly. But, I think that the 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 idea that we do that uh, that. We know what's going to happen 500 million years from now, and we knew what happened 500 million years in the past. We know it. We know it. Therefore, and that, uh-huh. that's it. I, I, I can't. I can't accept that anymore. I. I, I don't even. The Big right. Bang I is mean, a theory in itself. Right. We're not supposed to know anything. It, We're not supposed to. There are some people that. That's the point. It's capital S scientism, where it's like the Big Bang theory happened, and if you fucking question the Big Bang, I'm gonna go with the Big Bang up the side of your head. <laughs> you no, know what I mean? I, right. That's stupid. But. But no, I mean, at the same time, they are admitting it's a theory, though. Yeah, exactly. So, well, yeah, right? Sure. That's good. Except that um, theories are should be openly questioned, right? Well, right, but at least they're calling it a theory. There's at least that democracy, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's even in the show title, Big Bang Theory. Now, if I, <laughs> well, went, if I was, had a yeah. t- hypothetical time machine and I they went back, used it. And I went back uh, 20 billion years, which is pre-Big Bang, Okay. Is hypothetical. Okay. I'm, there's no, I'm, I can't go back that far, can I? Because uh, according to the Big Bang Theory. Well, this universe was just infinitely small. That's what I think. Oh, it's that... not that... See, the Big Bang is really just this universe coming into the observation of this universe. It's not that uh, something exploded. It's just it grew bigger, right? Yeah, and it was almost infinitely dense at first. And then the universe exploded. goes infinitely in just like it goes infinitely out. Right, but now that you believe that because every point why? in every point in the universe is the center of the universe. Right, but think about that. Yeah, yeah, but that's you believe that because well, you're because told that, right. Well, no, because if you think about it, the universe goes infinitely out because even if it hits a wall somewhere, well, then what's behind the wall? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it has to go infinitely out. It has to. But well, why? If it if it if it stops somewhere, well, then where's the shit behind what it stopped. I, I mean, I've never seen it before, though, with my own Yeah, eyes. but that's... We gotta wrap our little heads around it, though. It's hard for our little brains to comprehend it. But that's the point of the universe. We're not supposed to be able to comprehend it. Because if we did, then we would know what the whole universe is about, and it'd be the end of the board game, know, and we have to start over again. I need more, <laughs> yeah, but I need more proof than to, to, than to just accept that... Um, that the that the universe is infinite um, because uh, people have told me that before. But if it's I mean, not it's infinite, not even, it hasn't even then what that, is it? I, it hasn't even been that much of an idea for that long. But all of a sudden, it's gospel well, to so many because people. Because our I've brains to. have finally evolved to comprehend it. Okay, but we have the same brains as when in, in ancient Egypt that we have now. Our brains have not, okay. uh, according to actual Well, ancient evolution, Egypt, they were smart. According to, yes, but did they have the... But I thought they weren't the same species as us, are they? Who? Didn't ancient we start, o- didn't we start over as... What the hell are you talking about? I'm, I'm well, curious Well, when was the Great Flood? I forgot. I, I should get this straight. Okay. Was the Great Flood 
before the ancient Egyptians. Okay, so are you talking about an, uh, pre, -dilu pre diluvians and antediluvians? Um, you're talking about. Yeah, I know. How what you're many, about. how many thousands of years was the ancient Egyptians? Okay. Do you remember? Yeah. I don't. Okay, so. Is it like a hundred thousand or what? Uh, no, not a hundred thousand. No. Three hundred thousand. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. I, I don't know. I'll too. Google it quick. Is this what your? Uh... Well, the the point is, is that um. It's fit. Okay, so let me just give you a number. They said that humans started over fifteen thousand years ago. They say that that is how old civilization is. Thirty one hundred BC. What? Is ancient. about how it says ancient Egyptian civilization followed prehistoric Egypt and coalesced around 3100 BC. Yeah, so what it depends so on. So that's is, only 5,000 yeah, years what ago. What it depends on is. Yes, yes, exactly. So what it depends on is how you. What do you constitute as. Oh, so that is the, our same species. Never mind. Because yeah. I'm thinking restarted over as a species 12,000 years Are you being serious about that? Yes, 12,000 years ago. People think it's 6,000. But it's not. It's twelve thousand. Flood of Noah, Noah and the flood. Mainstream scientists think it's six thousand, but it's really twelve thousand. Okay, can you please go into more detail? Because I because I mean, well, no you listen to Joe Rogan, <laughs> don't you? Yes. Yeah, they they've discussed this with like Graham Hancock yeah, and yeah. right. So that, okay, if you know all that, they then debated why are you, the mainstream then why scientists. Are you just, because if you if you um if you kind of. Like, if you heard all of that, then why would you think about this timeline? If, when I hear I that, just forgot. I, no, when I, I hear when I hear about Graham Hancock, that makes me think, okay, well, we could have been a species 100,000 years ago. We could have had just no, as many there pe was people other, on Earth. No, there was another species that long ago. I think there, Our species we're talking right now, yeah. us, was started over 12,000. From where? We just, from where? What do you mean? Right. That's the, the great debate. That's the great debate. No, no, there, what I think is, I think our species survived fine, and and I don't think it wiped out everything on the planet. I think that uh, the hunter gatherers were the ones that survived, and and then they. So continued. we're the hunter gatherers. Yeah, we were the hunter gatherers. But, dude, there are still hunter gatherers on the planet right, right now that right. are human as well. That aren't as evolved into civilization. What, it's civilization. Yeah. Right. If you're talking about evolution in a physical sense, or you're talking about. Uh, civilization. Those are those are a little two two different things. You know what I mean? Like um, evolved. It's in, you mean it's a debate whether it's quote unquote evolution. Yeah, because if evolution in a in a civilization sense versus evolution in a physical like different species sense, like that's those are two different things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, apparently, in, a species like evolving into basically having a different physical form takes they say according to own darwinism it takes huge spans of time right and, so like, if we've evolved it's not much by much right yeah um exactly from the egyptians it wouldn't be it wouldn't be much whatsoever. this is so funny because i was kind of reading about this in many articles with the example of how have we become less violent and basically what the if you read a bunch of articles that debate this um, basically, we have become slightly less violent, but by but not by much. So, what a long time ago it seemed like Compared there was to when? To well, when? Um, just let's say the med med medieval times where there it just seemed more barbaric and violent and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Where we're actually not that much less violent, um, but we're just a bigger population, and so just. They say as the population grows, the proportion of violence goes down. So it's like we're just as violent, but because you can get away with it because you wouldn't there wouldn't be prying eyes back then. Well, yeah, and I think what they mean is person to person, we're still kind of violent. If what you mean by the word is violent is whether I kill you or slap you, right? Same thing. It's violence, right? Okay. So basically, back then you're more likely to be killed, yeah. but now you're just more likely to be slapped. Okay, so we're still violent, just less, right? But listen right? to this, though. Listen to this. So in America, um, back in in the late 1800s, when uh, there was that guy that had his host, that the murder hotel in Chicago. Have you? Did you hear about him? I heard the one in L.A. In the, he, the Cecil um, Hotel well, well, in so L.A. He, it was um, for the World's Fair, too. He had a hotel where he would... Uh, locked it has the doors locked he would release a gas what? and it would kill the person and Jesus. then and then there would be a shoot that the body would go down to into the basement 
and he would dismember what they and, and based the American Horror Story yeah, thing on. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was the Cecil Hotel in L.A. No, so he and he this guy. Well, did, then it he, might be both because I know the hotel and did this for a certain amount. And here's the thing: is I saw a documentary about that, and they were saying at that time that the murder rate was so low here in the country. What uh, time was it? The 30s or no, 20s? Uh, no, eight, late 1800s. Like 18, oh, okay, like yeah, 18, like Jack the Ripper yeah, days. Yeah, like 1890-something. Yeah, yeah. So the, the murder rate was so low that when these people disappeared, they that the idea was, well, she or he just ran away. They, right, the, the, they didn't one, The first even... instinct wasn't that they were killed. Right. The murder rate was so low. It was, uh, it was something like uh, 0.3% or something. Something ridiculous like that. So, yeah. he, so he, someone could like that could get away with it under under uh, um, and with such a low murder rate. In the yeah, country. and I think um, that might that might exist in humans somewhat to be a serial killer back then, just from maybe the violence of some of the wars. But then once World War Two hit, there's tons of serial killers after World War Two because yeah. um, World War Two was so violent around the world that. It, it almost like le- made subconsciously people think that, oh, violence is legitimized. It's okay. Yeah. And so um, people were literally, you know, because now it seems like serial killers are almost going away. Whether maybe they're still serial killers, but the media is not paying attention anymore for some reason. Yeah. It used to be the media was all over them. Well, America is like the, the serial capital. I mean, serial yeah. killer capital. Now it's almost like we're just doing it differently with mass shootings yeah well, well here's the thing we're just more efficient well here's at the being serial no, killers no because it, it depends well right on, it depends on what snapshot you take of history like if you look at vikings they celebrated the, uh, a, a guy's ki- amount of people that he killed dude i just thought of something let's say right the serial killers throughout history they didn't have automatic weapons no they didn't who's to say if they did there would be mass shootings back then too i bet that's what um, the serial killers evolved to just the mass shooting serial killers. They're just more fast and efficient about it. They do it in one day instead of over the course of years. Well, Genghis Khan, right? Yeah, right. Except, Genghis well, Khan had a had a machine gun. Well, right. Right. No, I think that if Ge- if Genghis Khan could give machine guns to all his men, that's right. The, he, he, right. One machine gun, no, of a of a one serial killer here couldn't do anything. Well, right. That's what I mean. To, yeah. He would have an entire army. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is, yeah. um. We've just become more efficient. We've given our serial killers more efficient tools. Yeah. Right? I think. Yeah. Because otherwise, why don't we hear about them? It's because we do hear about them every day in mass shootings. Well, right? yeah, yeah, th- I, yeah. That's true. Well, there hasn't been that many mass shootings recently. Oh, but what? What? Recently, compared what to... What do you mean? Okay. I thought... I've heard the opposite. Now, here's the thing. I, I think that... Um, it is... There were so many last month, they couldn't even make it on the dude, internet. Okay, also... We're talking about um, wasn't enough space about, to print uh, it on the internet. Talking about spreading, uh, we're, we're talking about spreading so everybody hears about it. Um, yeah. There's that argument that when serial killers in America, um, they're they they are talked about too much. Once right, the, and it's, it's a like, disproportionate. They're almost romanticized to a point because they they, they 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 what if they get exactly what they wanted? Their face everywhere. And that's what they want. That's what they wanted. Yeah. And and we keep giving it to them in the in the, in the American media. That's what media, was so funny. Feeding into the fucking um, uh, serial killer uh, kind of almost giving them what they want. Not yeah. Culture, but what, you know, is it so? Is it the media's fault for rom- for like blowing up and giving them? So then the next one says, "Hey, he got that." So da-da. disproportionate right. attention. So if yeah. We stopped giving them attention. Would they? Would, well, would that's it, what's funny. That was actually a fad a few years ago. I heard about it where I was reading where. Some um, shootings would happen, and they wouldn't say the name of the person. Yeah. And but then it's like, well, why was that a fad? Why didn't they keep doing that? Yeah. They didn't. They stopped doing. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. It's like they did catch on to that me- right, me- right, right, right. mentality. Then, but then they couldn't keep with right, it. Yeah. Because you're also like <laughs> spitting in the face of like the victims too. Because you're like, it's almost like look who we're making popular as the person that. Uh, shouldn't get the attention. Yeah, the victims the attention. Yeah. should be getting the mourning or whatever. Right, right, yeah, right, right. But it's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I think. Uh, also, they say that when kids die, the parents get more attention than the kid dying. 
But then when you become an adult, you'll get the attention for your death, not your parents. Isn't that crazy? Wait, okay, say, say it one more time. So if you were five mm -hmm. and you died, your parents would get... The, yeah, yeah. the emotional well, attention knew, from society. Nobody really knew you Knows kid. the kid, nobody, right. The but kid they know the what, parents. The kid didn't become anything. Right, Everybody's so the point is... the potential loss. Right, right. The potential, so the, 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 everybody's mourning the loss of potentiality. Yes, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, once you become an adult, then now you get the attention for your dad. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah. your parents. But yeah, isn't yeah. that funny? Yeah, yeah. You become an adult, and now it's no longer about your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really or interesting because you've reached your potential. Yeah, but yeah. then when you're the serial killer, then uh, uh, when you're the killer yourself, then they look at your parents because they're like, to, for, what was for your reasons. What, what was your relationship with your parents? For the reason of becoming a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that. Not, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. For different reasons, there yeah. Was a, um, there was a guy. Uh, to explain it. I watched the documentary uh, who, he was a, we don't hear about him a lot here in the States, but he was basically the second version of Jack the Ki uh, Jack the Ripper in London. You have to watch the documentary. It's on. I, I really Where recommend it. I it wish I could. It um, took place in London. Or yeah, here. It, it took place in London, and it and it happened over such a long span of time. Of time, and the reason I thought of that is because they interviewed his dad, and he and his dad was like oh God. a super normal guy, and he was like, I when would was have he never, killing? Ever known? This this happened, um, and and. Why it, this happened in the 70s and and it happened for like nine years. It wasn't the doctor. Was no, it, it wasn't the doctor. The, the doctor like guy, he's the most prolific serial killer. Yeah. He killed over 200 people. Yeah. He's like, well, again, um, though, he has the world record for Genghis personal. Khan? Yeah, but Genghis Khan didn't personally stab yeah, the people. His soldiers did, yeah. right? Yeah. This guy holds the record. He personally, he yeah. didn't, he poisoned them with the medicine or whatever he uh, did yeah, as the yeah. doctor. Um, he's yeah, the, Kevorkian? he, he. No, the, it's a British doctor. He holds oh, the world yeah. record for personal mm -hmm. deaths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, 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 I did hear Right, because Hitler didn't kill, right? Yeah, he, he didn't he's do it like, himself, He's yeah. like um, Charles Manson. Yeah. He didn't do it himself. Yeah. And, yeah. He geniusly manipulated other people to do it. Right, right. Yeah. Just like when we're done with this uh, Politics. podcast recording, <laughs> I want you to go over there and <laughs> stab that. No, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Right, uh, okay. You know, those people, uh, they have master manipulation tools. The power yeah. of observation didn't um, quell that joke. <laughs> no, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, oh, man, you're trying to tie it in, That's huh? funny, yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, media and commercialism is an interesting topic, and I think that yeah. at another time, another time. Yeah, actually, thanks for um, just having the idea to record this. Yeah, this is absolutely. awesome. Um, signing off. Thanks, guys. Signing off. Derek again. And Rhett. Um, thanks for listening.